Have you ever wanted to know ways to prevent burnout for yourself, your employees, and your business? Hello, my successful and healthy earthlings. Mahela Raguse here, naturopath and founder of the Natural Health Podcast. Today, I'm going to share with you some proactive burnout strategies and ways to implement them easy in your business. First, we're going to go through what is burnout prevention, burnout prevention strategies, and then top easy ways to implement these strategies. Let's get into it. Welcome to the Natural Health Podcast. We bring awareness of sustainable health in the business hustle space. The Natural Health Podcast is perfect for the high-performing, business-minded individuals who want to work with their biochemistry to achieve optimal success and health. It's Mondays with Mahela. That's right, me. Thank you so much for tuning in. Absolutely love, love, love and appreciate your support. On Mondays, I'm here to provide you with simple, savvy and sustainable health hacks to optimize your health. Let's get into today's episode. It's an interesting one because I'm going to be talking about burnout prevention. I mean, everyone knows what burnout is. I mean, there's so many individuals here in Australia, overseas, that suffer from burnout. They just, you know, they they're fatigued, they can't get out of bed, they literally can't do the job that they used to do. And it's so unfortunate because these individuals have so much to give to our businesses. These individuals have so much to give to our society, right? So there was a worldwide survey commissioned by Asana. I'm not too sure if you use Asana or not, but if you don't, Asana is absolutely amazing. It's a project management system. And they actually found that Australia had one of the highest rates of burnout of any country in 2020. So that was last year. So in 2020, Australia had the highest burnout, right? The study analyzed white collar workers and how they cope with working from home last year found that almost four in five Australians suffered burnt out, 77%. That is a lot of individuals last year in 2020 that suffered from burnout. But that doesn't mean they're not suffering from burnout this year. It may have even gotten worse, right? And this is why these burnout strategies, these prevention strategies I want to talk about, you need to know. And I want to mention them at the end of the podcast and how you can implement them. So among the more than 2,000 Australian New Zealanders who were surveyed, almost half said that they worked nearly twice as many late hours as the previous year. The number of hours spent working overtime also increased for many people from 236 hours up to 400. 136 hours in a single year. That is a lot of overtime, right? Why did that happen? Uh, maybe people were just, you know, um, focusing on work and not focusing on what was happening. Maybe people had more time because they were traveling less. Who knows, right? But the key is, is we don't want you or your employees or your business hitting burnout, right? So what is burnout prevention? Let's get into it, right? So, the people and businesses who don't have a burnout prevention strategy in the business are going to fail full stop. It's a given. If you don't have a burnout prevention strategy policy in place, if you're a business owner, you're going to fail. It's going to cost you so much money. It's going to cost you so much productivity. It is going to even cost maybe some individual's health. And you don't want to be that employer that puts, you know, your employee's health last. You want to put it at the first because that is your asset. They are your key assets, right? So burnout is categorized by emotional exhaustion, ineffectiveness in the workplace, chronic negative responses to stressful workplace conditions, while not considered a mental illness yet, right, we don't know what's going to happen, burnout can be considered a mental health issue. It is definitely a mental health issue. I have been there. I know so many individuals that have been there, right? According to the Journal of Applied Behavioral Research, burnout is having a growing impact on workplaces, in particular in advanced economies and during times of economic downturn, which is what was happening last year, what's happening this year, right? Some of the signs and symptoms, you're like, do I have a burnout? Do I not? Let's go into them, right? Reduced efficiency and energy, lowered levels of motivation, increased errors, headaches, irritability, increased frustration, super suspicious. Um, you, you know, you're always thinking about why is someone, someone doing that? Why is someone doing that? Right. So more time spent working with less being accomplished, full stop, right? 
severe burnout can also result in people self-medicating with addictions such as alcohol, drugs, food, and so forth, sarcasm, negativity. But you know, if left undressed, if this burnout is left undressed in your business from your employees, they can suffer from poor physical health, mental health, clinical depression, reduced job satisfaction. So they used to love their job, but now they don't anymore. Decreased productivity, increased absenteeism, increased risk of accidents, poor workplace morale, communication breakdown, increased turnover, right? And the thing is, is no age is immune to burnout. It is equally affected for men, women, ages. It doesn't matter. If you don't get looked after at your work, you need to be thinking about, is this the job that you want to be doing? If your job doesn't have a burnout prevention strategy or policy, is this the company that you want to be working for? Do they have things in place that you don't burn out? What are the things in place, right? We're going to go into them, right? So let's talk about proactive burnout strategies, right? So this all came about a study. It was an interesting study that I found and I'll go through it with you now, right? So they did a two wave longitude panel design was used in 617 employees, mainly employed in government agencies, healthcare education. They were asked to complete an online survey twice with an interval of one month. So monthly, right? Okay, so let's look at this study and the conclusion of it, right? So what did they find out? So I'm going to read this out, right? It says the findings of this study confirmed that employees can proactively prevent burnout by investing in resources resources, yet proactive actions should be taken before increased burnout complaints are done, right? This study contributes to scientific knowledge on proactive behaviors and burnout prevention by investigating the mechanisms underlying the temporal relationship between proactive burnout prevention and burnout. An important practical implication of this study is that the highlights that more attention should be given to employees self-initiating actions to prevent burnout as proactive burnout prevention can effectively reduce levels of burnout. So this study is saying if you have a proactive burnout strategy policy in place, your employees are less likely to get burnt out. Or if employees put something in place themselves, right? Okay, so this is so interesting. And this is this is on two sides. If you are an employer or if you're an employee, right? This study covers both sides. If you are an employee or you run your own business and you don't have a boss, you need to put things in place to prevent burnout. If you are an employer, you need to put things in place for your employees, but also for yourself, right? So some other things I'm going to go through in regards to what should be done anyway, but a lot of people don't do. And this, when people don't do the following things that I'm going to talk about, that is when burnout occurs, right? So what should be done is uh, provide clear expectations of all employees, obtain confirmation that each employee understands these expectations. Because if they're not understood, this individual might do this task for five hours and then you come back and say it's not good enough, then they have to go back five hours and do it again. So these expectations need to be clear. Make sure employees have necessary resources and skills to meet these expectations. So there's no point of giving your, I don't know, your PA a role of, I don't know, writing a paper when they've never written before, right? So it needs to have the right resources in place because that's going to stress them out. Provide ongoing training to employees. This is an absolute given and has to be done, right? These are the underlying things that need to be done to prevent burnout. Help employees understand their value to the organization and their contribution to the goals, mission, and vision. This should be done... You know, all the time asking employees, what is the mission of our business? What is the vision of our business? Do you know where you fit in? Enforce reasonable work hours, including necessary sitting employees without good boundaries home at the end of the day. You know, you all have those employees that just, you know, they don't really work in the morning and then it hits afternoon and they smash out their work. Find out what works for them. They want to start work at midday make it happen. Why should they start work at 8 a.m. like everyone else? Because when they're most functioning is in the afternoon and vice versa. Find out what works for your employees. Help assess workload for those who feel pressure. Are you all right this workplace, work workload? Do you need any assistance? How easy is that, right? 
set reasonable and realistic expectations. These are just, you know, the common given. Make sure that you make sure that these are all in line with their job description, with their, you know, what the task is supposed to be do, where they fit into the organization. Encourage social support and respect within among work team. Make sure the team gets along, team building exercises, support physical activity throughout the workday. So if individuals do want to go away from their desk at lunchtime, encourage that. If individuals want to go to the gym, encourage that. These are the things that you need to understand your employees, but you also need to understand yourself. What works for yourself? What reduces your stress to ensure that at the end of the day, when you leave, when you close that office door, you are not stressed. You know, you're not thinking and reminiscing and doing work. You're enjoying time with your family, with your friends, with yourself, right? Strongly encourage the taking of breaks away from work environment. It's an absolute given. Research says that this is the best thing to give micro breaks also stand up sit down give those resources if stand up desks are necessary for employees you know consider how leadership approaches might impact employees at risk of burnout what how do they work best given directions written visual how do your employees and every employee is different how do they work better right avoid always requiring the overachievers to compensate this is this happens all the time and i see that happen an individual that's really good at their task they go oh bill would do that oh yeah just give that to jane i'll just give that to them because so blah 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 didn't do it everyone else has to pick up the slack no you know this is where um this is where performance management has to be in place and ensure that you get the most out of your employees. Find out what do your employees like, right? What does your employee like and and, and, and then reward them. But let, let's 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 get into the fun part, which is what you're here for, right? Top ways to implement a proactive burnout strategy, right? So let's say your proactive burnout strategy is no emails after 7 p.m. From 7 a.m. Sorry, from 7 p.m. to 7 a.m. No emails to be written, sent, received. That is your proactive burnout strategy. And that is a proactive burnout strategy, right? That is an absolutely one. Let's go through another one, right? So that's a policy. Putting policies in place. Number one, putting policies in place. So let's say that's your policy is no emails between 7 and 7, right? And then the other policy says absolutely no communication over the weekend unless needed, right? Absolutely amazing. But also if needed, you have a system in place where you have, let's say you have four team members, you have a weekend once a month, right? You're responsible for a weekend once a month and the rest of the weekends, you are not responsible for them, right? Self, people for self-initiating, making things happen themselves, right? So that's two strategies there already. The third one is actually doing a survey of your employees. What do they love to do? What do they not like to do, right? Finding out how do they release their stress? Ask them, ask your employees, what, what is the most stressful month of the year? Let's say you work in a finance business. The most stressful would be like the tax year right? The end of financial year would be most stressful, right? So what do you do around that time? You have more, you have more team building exercises. You have more support. You offer, let's say a massage for individuals. There's so many things that can be done, right? And I know people might be thinking, oh, it's going to cost me money. It's going to cost me money. It's not going to cost you money to tell someone not to send emails from seven till seven. That's free, right? It's not going to cost you money to have meetings to say, excuse me, what what's your what, what releases your stress? When are you most stressed? That's not going to cost you money, right? So these are policies in place. The second one is having leadership. So this is the key because yes, you may have those policies in place, but then the leader doesn't even do them, right? The leader, you or your employer or your manager needs to obey by those policies. If you send an email at eight o'clock at night, but you told everyone else not to send them, how does that make any sense? Doesn't, right? The third one is reward. Make sure that you don't just, this is what happens always in a workplace. When someone does something wrong, attention is given to it and they are drilled, right? But Rarely ever do individuals get rewarded for the good behavior they do, especially those overachievers, right? And that's when they get burnt out. They don't get rewarded. So if someone actually does an amazing job and they may have stayed up a little bit because there was a project timeline due, reward these individuals. 
And do you know what? And this is the key also is you don't just give everyone a voucher. Not everyone enjoys a voucher. And this is where the survey comes in where you find out what does this employee like? I rem- Let's say, for example, Jane, right? I remember Jane talking about riding a horse and how much she loves horses. You know what? I'm going to reward her with a horse lesson, right? How amazing is that? Or let's say she is, someone else loves their dog. You get them the dog, dog hamper or something. Like, that is personalized. And this is where you're going to be different as an employer compared to your your competition because you're going to get the most out of your employees. Your employees are going to be so wanting to work there. They're going to be giving their everything, you know. They're going to be giving their everything to be most productive. They're going to be most creative, right? And then the fourth one is how you're going to implement it through community and teamwork because that is the that is the sprinkling on top of that cake or whatever people say is the community aspect. And this is where team building exercises, this is where, you know, recognition in front of a community, making you feel like a community, having teams that are tight knit, having that community feel in your business, you know, understanding not just work, but understanding the individual on a personal basis, right? So I started by saying that Australians have so much burnout, especially in 2020, suffering with so much burnout. I gave you some potential strategies that you can put in place, like expectations, avoiding putting everything on the overachiever and so forth. And then I gave you how you can implement examples, right? So there you have it. I gave you everything that you need to implement a proactive burnout strategy in your workplace to get the most out of your employees, to get the most out of yourself for optimal health, for optimal success for you, right? There you have it. The Natural Health Podcast. Do what you do best. Love, like, rate, review, comment. Let me know. Do you have a proactive burnout strategy in your business? Let me know in the comments below. And until next Monday, love you. And remember, the Natural Health Podcast is here on YouTube, Spotify, whatever you want to listen to on it, right? And remember the missing link between failure and success is your health.